Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, w welcome. Um, as as I mentioned, um, our, our previously scheduled talk um, on on ghetto was, was our, our speaker was unable to attend due to um, unforeseen um, uh, uh, illness, and so. My name is Seth Hilbrand. I'm uh, I'm I'm officially um, one of the lead developers for the KeyCAD team. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Um, and uh, but today I'm going to talk about something that's only tangentially related to KeyCAD because Wayne already had all of the uh, details that 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 you need from the very beginnings of of KeyCAD. So I'm going to talk about um, uh, about a, a pet project of mine on how we. Um, one of the issues that we run into in KiCad, and we, KiCad has, if you're not aware, one of the largest, single largest 3D model libraries for electronic components in existence. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of 3D models that are open, open source, freely available. We use CAD query, uh, is Adam, if Adam's still here, to, yes, uh, we use CAD query predominantly to generate, um, and we use CAD query through FreeCAD, and uh, FreeCAD was also uh, talking earlier today, and we output using Open Cascade, our talk just finished, to uh, do step files. Now, with so many files, we have kind of a unique uh, process where we're, we're not actually generating a single model that we then uh, output uh, to step files in this in this in this case our, our dedicated librarians who uh, honestly are uh, vastly under uh, underappreciated in in the whole uh, KiCad ecosystem they um, work tirelessly to expand and curate and uh, create these models for people to integrate in their electronic designs now the difficulty becomes we have to store all of these models, and when you go out to a package manager, the package manager also has to generate the packages for these files. And what that, what that looks like on a package manager, say, like Fedora's, is you will first download the repository, and then you will install the repository inside the, uh, the CH root, and take that and then archive the output of that into your, your final, into your final package. That means you have three separate copies of whatever the output is. In the case of KiCad, we're pushing about six gigabytes worth of 3D models that get downloaded, installed, and then finally packaged, meaning that the build environment for package managers gets larger and larger, and for our end users, the downloads get larger and larger and larger. This is an awesome problem to have. It's a great problem to have, and yeah, it's still a problem, and so maybe, maybe there are some ways that we, can, uh, that we can address that in the future. So, step files, universally, universally accepted in any uh, 3D, uh, uh, 3D editing and modeling program worth its salt. Uh, they are, it is an open specification in the sense that you can go and look what the specification is and if you can read it without actually uh, having someone walk you through it the first time, then I really want to meet you because you're a very smart person and you can teach me a lot. <laughs> However, it is an open specification and, and so uh, we, can, we can look at it and we can understand exactly how we utilize it in order to uh, potentially optimize what we see from the output. So in this case, step files are inherently redundant. They're text-based, and we have output information for, for example, here I'm, I'm going to try to use my, uh, my, my cursor here. Oh, there it is. So we have output. In this case, we have a 16-pin dip uh, package here from the, uh, from the KiCad model library, and we have 16 pins. Those are all exactly the same pins. All you're doing is you're taking pin, 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 turn around, pin, 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 pin. You are making the exact same part, and if you were to, uh, if you were to utilize all of the tools that STEP gives you, you could just make that one part and say copy it in this, in this offset and, and change the offset. But you can also generate it in another fashion. And all 
of the step file output uh, engines will typically generate it in another fashion. And that fashion is I have pin one and I'm going to start by creating the origin and then I'm going to create a, a, a vector from that, uh, from that origin and now, I'm, now I can extrude along that vector. Oh, I, I need to extrude again in the same direction. Well, I start with another origin and then I create another vector and then I extrude along. So you have this, this repeated function throughout the file. It's a very safe way of generating. Um, but what happens is when you generate with this safe way of generating, uh, we're 5.8 gigabytes worth of data. Uh, Diptrace, which also has an open, I'm not sure if people are aware of this, another EDA uh, software package, they provide an, an open library as well in that they provide the step files um, that you can go out and download. They're at about 4.7 gigabytes total for all of, their, uh, all of their models. And manufacturer models, if you go on, say, uh, say Samtech, uh, for some high density uh, throughput, 300 pin connectors, that 300 pin connector is going, to, is going to cost you 40 megabytes worth of step file because it's generating an origin and a vector for every separate, in, every separate element that it is extruding in, the, in that model. But you get your information. The end result is good for the user because you get guaranteed information as long as you're willing to give up that, uh, that disk space, that bandwidth, and critically, that load time. Because once you have to load up those, uh, th that 50 gigabytes worth of data for that model, every time you do that, you're ca you need to pull all of those data in, and that, that slows down your overall process, which slows down your iteration, and so we can optimize this a little bit. So there's content redundancy. I'm gonna, this is actually a step file. You're, you're looking inside, you see the text here. Um, and that first element, this is, um, this, is uh, this step file happens to come from the Open Cascade 6.6 processor. So it's a little, little, little outdated, but it's still, uh, still generally valid. The first one is a key, it's a, it's a string key in the step format. It just needs to be unique. And uh, what, we, what the output from Open Cascade gives is it gives you a unique number, which is you know, a perfectly valid way of doing that. And then everything else will reference those unique numbers. So you can see on here, say, uh, say you know, element 11 here is setting up an axis placement in three dimensions that references elements 12, 13, and 14. So you go down and look at 12, 13, and 14. Well, 12 is a 0, 0, 0 Cartesian point. 13 is a direction in the z-hat direction, right? One in the z-hat. And 14 is a direction in the x-direction. So what we're, what we're doing here is we're setting up a coordinate in the z-x plane. Or we're setting up a plane, the uh, z-x plane. Now we're going to do something else. We're going to say, all right, we want another plane. What do we start with? Well, we start with the origin. Well, we're not going to... We don't go back to the original origin, we make a new origin. And so there's a new origin here that is also a reference. But steps, uh, step files are inherently references. So what we can do if we intelligently walk through this file is that we can, take a, uh, we can look at that and say, well, this reference is the same as this reference. All of the origins are exactly the same. We don't need to output them. We just remember what number was the first one. And we tell everyone to look back at that original reference. So all of these, all of these can be, uh, can be uh, incrementally optimized to bring it down to a much faster load speed and a, and a substantially smaller direction. And how do you do that? Well, you step through and you can either parse out the individual elements, in which case you have to recognize there are uh, in, the, uh, in the step uh, format, you can have trying to remember the exact number, I believe it's about 400 different, uh, 400 different commands. So, so you would have to, you could parse those 400 different commands and figure out you know, how, you, how you do that reference. Or you do it something a little bit um, A, safer and perhaps more naive, which is what I chose to do here, and you do a string comparison. It's also perfectly valid because if you have two, uh, two lines that represent the exact same string, they're the exact same thing. So what we, what we do is we 
take all of those and we put them together. These exact same lines from the exact same file, now we have our Cartesian point here, number 12, and instead of, when we're setting up the two planes, both planes in number 11 references the origin at number 12, and the second plane, number 15, references the origin 12, rather than setting up a new origin every, every, every single time. So this works out pretty well for us. Because what, what can we do with, say, an individual model? In, the, in this case, a QFN 68. What we're, what we're looking at here is you know, a, 60, a 68 non-leaded non quad uh, uh, flat pack here. That what we get here originally, I have, two, I, have, I have two here that I pulled from DipTrace and one from, or one from the KiCad library. Um, the KiCads was originally about 1.7 megabytes for this, uh, for this one file that represents a 64 pin model and after you take that down and go get rid of all the repetition and just put in references well we're down to about 600 and uh, 660 uh, kilobytes so we we lose a little over 50 percent of that file size just from repetition same thing with with dip trace we go from about uh, a one megabyte file to a 530 kilobyte file we get we save this without losing any information, and that's the critical part. We're not talking about compress compressing this and actually losing any information about the, uh, about the content of the step file. What we're doing is we're saying we don't need the same information in multiple places in, uh, in the step file, and step supports this natively. So we're not creating a different file format, we're just creating a step file format that is actually uh, slight, uh, slightly more optimal. Critically, we leave a few cases, um, uh, leave a few cases of duplication in there, where you might be able to uh, reduce it further if you wanted to. You might notice here that element 14 is the same element as element 16. Element 14 is a direction in the 1, 0, negative 0 direction. And element 16 is in the 1, 0, positive 0 direction. Um, this makes sense to computer scientists and not so much to physicists. Uh, so, you, uh, so in this case, we actually have the exact same direction, but we don't want to bring it down any further because this representation for a computer scientist, it's actually something different. We, won't, we, we, don't want to, uh, we don't want to make an unnecessary optimization that we might end up, uh, that, that, that we might end up uh, regretting. So we play it safe on this, uh, on this front. We get our compression um, without the, uh, with, with, without the uh, additional issues. Now, immediately when you talk about this, uh, talk about reducing step files, the first thing that people say is, but well, what about step Z? Step Z is great. In case you don't know, Step Z is, uh, is a light wrapper of Zlib that goes over a step file. And Zlib does a Huffman tree compression. So you take, take the Huffman tree and you represent all of the data and you get, uh, you get generalized textual compression that when you repeat text commands over and over and over again, um, Zlib will kind of uh, create a code tree that represents those more effectively in a binary format. So you get a binary output, so automatically you get about 50% you know, uh, savings from the binary output, and then you also get to uh, provide a reference window for the Huffman encoding to, uh, to take commands, you know, the later commands that get, um, that get referenced back to an earlier window if they repeat a lot. So you get a lot more compression. But that's an, an orthogonal compression to what we're doing. Because we take um, a first level pass, understanding what the references mean in the step files, and then intelligently replacing those, uh, those repeated commands with step references themselves. So you get to combine these two approaches together, and suddenly you get the benefit from the step Z format, as well as the, this additional benefit from our, uh, from our um, from our replacement technology, 
we combine these together and independently step Z is pretty is is pretty good so here you can you can see again dip trace on the top and, and keycap models on the bottom just going to step Z you go from one megabyte in the in the dip trace model to 176 kilobytes in step Z but if you start already from the 500 kilobyte um, uh, step reduce function and take that step reduced file, you also get that additional compression on top of that. So you get down, uh, you get down even further. You want to take both of these methods together, and this gives you uh, this gives you the most bang for your buck. What does that get you? Well, that gets you the ability to support a much larger library for a given uh, for a given bandwidth use for a given hard drive storage and it uh, it prevents having to uh, uh, having to deal with um, with resizing each of your build partitions in order to support a rapidly growing uh, a rapidly growing 3d uh, 3d model library there are also some additional savings in in in, serv in server uh, storage as well as load time that you get to that you get to benefit from uh, larger benefits even from the uh, from the keycap models. The keycap models are, in, in case you didn't know this, <clears throat> we're a little bit more accurate than the dip trace models. So we have, we have a little more a little more information in there. So we we actually we actually get a larger larger benefit um, from this. But uh, companies such, uh, like Samtech, similarly, the uh, the output of that is uh, is similarly um, small. So how do you know after you've done this that you get the exact same thing out that you were putting in? And critically. In the 3D models, any MCAD person will, will tell you if you're, if you're modifying a 3D model, you need to make sure that nothing has physically changed in that output of the 3D model. Because if you change an output in the 3D model, you might as well just break the whole thing. Um, so it doesn't matter if we save anything if we, do, if we don't get an accurate output. And the naive way, of course, is to go through and just kind of look at it and you say, All right, you know, there's a regular one on the left and there's a compressed one on the right. And they look about the same. They look like they are probably, the, but but our, but we're not we're not picking up all of the details. We don't we're we're not critically going to be able to evaluate hundreds of thousands potentially you know and when we when we get to hundreds we're only at uh, we're, we're only at a few thousand right now but you know what eventually we're not going to be able to evaluate every single model that is generated in the library to ensure that we have an accurate transformation by eye we just don't have the manpower so what do you need to do you need to evaluate this um, in the code so what do we do with the with the reduction code is, is we go back to open cascade and you just heard about uh, uh, all, all of the Boolean operators that Open Cascade supports on solid models. This is fantastic. This is exactly what we need because we take the original one and then we load up our reduced one. And if we get the same thing in Open Cascade, loading one file and loading the other file, then if we subtract one from the other, we get zero. And so that's what that that's exactly what we do. We 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 use a uh, use a BREP algo API to uh, to cut the two models between each other. And you and if we are successful, then we don't uh, see a difference. And in fact, we do get a null result for the uh, for uh, for our entire library on the difference between loading Open Cascade for the zero uh, for the zeroth order uh, models that are directly output from uh, CAD query as well as our small as well as our smaller models. So what does that overall get us? Where 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 do we stand on a larger library? Well, the KiCad step library uh, goes from 5.8 <laughs> to 100 uh, 1.5. So this means that we can support you know four times as many models, four times as many models within the same within the same build volume and within within the same download. So, but more importantly. For uh, for for the work that I do, when I'm sharing models, I'm usually sharing it over over email with colleagues at uh, at remote workspaces because not everyone is is on board with Git yet. So 
sending over an email as soon as you hit that uh, that uh, 20 megabyte or so limit uh, most of your mail servers are going to kick it back at least mine will um, and so uh, I, I always need to get these large board models down to something that is uh, something that is addressable for a mail server um, and so the largest board that I've had to output so far is about six is about 60 megabytes and now we can now I actually as with this I can actually get that through the mail server. So this is what uh, this is what I get, <laughs> and where where this go uh, where this goes. So this is a single use library. You can check it out for yourself if you want to take a look. Give it a test drive. Uh, let me know if you find any any issues with it. So GitLab uh, address here for the uh, for the actual library. It's just command line utility. Call it on your file, give it a different output, and you can see the two. So thank you for your time. I uh, hope I'll take any questions.